Hey, good morning guys and hopefully gals. Pretty early in the morning when I get this done. Well, I've done this a few times but I'm still having trouble with the webcam. It drops out about 8 minutes. I'm just going to do another two part review, both probably around 7 to 8 minutes. Let's get started. Uh, this review concerns uh, Pro Wrestling Noel's big end of year television event, um, Winter Navigation Tour, the Joe Higuchi Memorial Show. Um, a review's already been done. It was a good review. Um, so I guess it's kind of like a response on how 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 I see how I uh, perceived some of the matches. Um, the show is taking place at Body Khan, which is the biggest venue Noah um, holds their shows. Um, it's always a hit and miss place to go uh, with Noah as their show earlier in the year did not draw well at all. Um, the claimed attendance for this show was um, 8,600. Um, I would have settled for this and just stated that this is what they drew if it wasn't for YouTube um, user Dinosaur Avenger. Um, bringing this to my attention in, attention in terms of exaggeration and uh, paper attendances. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, Matthew, aka Dinosaur Avenger, for plugging me in his last video. Very kind, much appreciated. Uh, my subscribers. Uh, the total of my subscribers has doubled <laughs> since you plugged me, so yeah, thank you and thank you. Um, uh, back to the attendance, um, after looking around, just judging for myself from the actual show and just reading uh, some other um, sources, um, I think the show would have drawn around five to 6,000 people perhaps, which is bad for Noah, basically for a Budokan show. The last claim attendance of Budokan was 7,200 where Shigura took on Go Shizaki. Uh That card was seriously stacked, uh, really stacked, and they still drew quite low. So this show's clean attendance was slightly high, so I guess it's not so bad in retrospect. Uh, so let's get on to the first match. Uh, this match is really random. Um, even though it's not a bad thing to uh, for ha have a random undercard tag match on a, in, on a build-up to a show, on a big television program, um, this was this definitely seen random. Um, you look at my last New Japan Pro Wrestling review for their pay-per-view dis destruction. None of the undercut matches were random. Um, there was always something going on. Uh, this match pitted Taiji Ishimori, Shuhei Taniguchi taking on Akira Tawa and outsider Kentaro Shiga. Uh, Taniguchi looked completely lost in this match. Um, put him in a singles match with someone he's familiar with, like Shigura. Um, and yeah, he could have a great, great match. Take him out of his comfort zone and he really just cannot cope. Um, I hope he can improve. Um, even the Taniguchi got the win, he looked poor. Uh, there wasn't anything really in this match, nothing that evoked the crowd into emotional investment. Um, anything that was beginning to look good, Shiga was doing some okay exchanges, just didn't pay off at all. Three quarters of a star. Uh, next up we had Atsushi Aoki taking on Ring, Ring of Honest Delirious. I was really looking forward to this match. I like both these guys considerably. Um, as is, I love the beginning of this match, Delirious was going nuts and Aoki merely conceding to the outside um, at this point. I thought it was a great way to start a match like this given its place on the card. A Aoki looked indifferent and then deceived Delirious at that point. Uh, this match couldn't have started better. Uh, this went to this transition to a frantic pace which was trans tra transitioned really well. A frantic pace of a segment where both workers didn't light up. They looked really good. You'd normally see in a match like this where they have their sort of chain wrestling segments. Um, it ends quite quickly. Um, and they go on to the next next segment of the match. But with this they didn't. It all sort of mingled. Both workers didn't really let up. And the crowd loved it. They just made the chain wrestling segment longer. So, uh, I like this match because it was easy to watch. Um, a good 10 minute match. Uh, watch it. You should watch this for an example of a 10 minute match that can be really good. So, I'm, gonna, I'm actually giving it three stars. Uh, put a belt on one of these guys. Uh, give them another 10 match. Or just put the match higher up on the card. Give them 10 minutes, and you've got a great match, in my opinion. Um, next up was a six man tag. You had the Kensuke Office team. Uh, taking on Akitoshi Saito, Masao Inoue, and Ricky Marvin. Wasn't expecting much here, so my expectations were easy to exceed. <coughs> a nice beginning, that was quite humorous and great to see Inoue getting some exposure on a big show. Um, even though it was only comedy exposure, still any exposure is good exposure, I guess. 
uh, sometimes. Uh, the beginning was unique. Uh, the crowd bought into Sasaki's invitation for NUA for the knife uh, chop fest. I was thinking, don't do it, NUA. Tag in Saito and save yourself. Um, it was a good, good beginning. Good beginning with some character. I mean, you couldn't ask for much more, really. Um, Inoue's attempts to blow Sasaki were pitiful. It was just great. Um, great, uh, just great character. There was a lot of character in this match. Um, was, there, was, there was a nice little angle with uh, Inoue coming in to help Saito, double teaming Kensuke. Inoue kayfabe thinking he, you know, he can't take him on his own. He, he may as well take him out with someone else's help. I was, I really loved that. Uh, Kensuke's selling was strange and fairly unbelievable in parts with his segments with Inoue later in the match. Uh, Ricky Marvin looked out of place from the little time he was in the ring. Keep him with the juniors, please. So, okay match in the end, all going uh, fairly smoothly. Still nothing really great. Uh, it was primarily a comedy match with some okay exchanges. Just gets two stars. Inoue uh, acquired good recognition from the crowd after the match, which was a nice touch, um, to say the least. I'll just do, do one more match and I'll get to the next part. Uh, next up, we had the tag match prolonging, prolonging the feud between Disobey and Masawa's Disciples. I think that's what they're called at the moment. The moment called something different back then, I can't remember. Uh, we had Go Shiyazaki and former GHC heavyweight champ Yoshinari Ogawa taking on Disobey to move Muhammad Yone and Gemba Hirayanagi. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, match produced some drama when Genba cut off some of Go's hair, inspiring Go to uh, begin kicking ass. Uh, before this, though, the match was lifeless. Um, what was supposed to be a heated feud match, none of them seemed like they really cared. Uh, the DQ didn't really justify the rest of the match. I mean, even though Genba did cut off Go's hair, uh, there was just no heat. It didn't seem like there was any heat. I, and it, if there was, I wasn't feeling it. I couldn't see it. Uh, there was, nothing was really bad about the match, uh, uh, te technical, technical wise, but I felt more emotion could have been instilled. I'm giving it one and a half stars. Just an attempted hype match for the feud. Uh, Go is wasted in this feud. Um, I hope him and Agal uh, stay, keep as the tag, and they get moved on to the, the GHC heavyweight tag title scene with uh, Sano and Takayama. Just gives him something. Uh, to work with, so he isn't in limbo, in limbo while they're trying to figure out what's going on with the, the heavyweight singles title. So that'll be it for the first part. I'll get into the second part. Uh, thank you. I'll be back in a few minutes.